Yo, what's good, bro? What's Welcome up? back to another video. Today, I have a good video prepared for you. I'm going to be going through a list of things that you need to learn in order to become a good scripter. We'll also be going through an order of importance and how hard it is to learn, etc. So, if there's anything here you don't know in the lower positions of the list, you should probably learn it. I mean, you don't have to, but I'm just saying. Also, keep in mind that it's impossible to put absolutely anything there is to know in one single video. So, these are just some of the most important things that I think every scripter should know. I'll also not be explaining in detail what these are. I just want to mention them so that you know that the feature exists when you need to use them. That makes sense? Alright, I feel like that was kind of a long intro. Was it long? Yes. You want me to start the video already? Yes. Alright, let's get started. Man. Actually, no, I'll make you wait a little bit. Alright, fine, fine, let's start. Also, you might want to write these down. No! Okay, now I'm starting. Right, so the first one is that you need to know the difference between a local script and a server script. This will give you the ability to create exceptions for certain features you might want to add into your game. This is very common for example in VAP areas. The way you filter the area is for using a local script disabling the can collide option of the invisible wall for the players with a local script of course and since changes in a local script only occur for the player you're dealing with I mean there are a couple of exceptions like linear velocity but you don't really need to worry about that right now only players with the game pass will be able to enter if you're new after you get a bit more experience this will come really in handy and you will be using a lot of local scripts so make sure you understand how to use local scripts this is a must if you're a scripter if you know any scripters just ask them next is understanding C frame this is also incredibly important, literally just as much as number one. I didn't put it in number one because you can't have two in one, right? That'd be stupid, right? Actually, maybe I could have just done something like coupled them together or whatever. But it's my list. C frame is incredibly powerful for two reasons mainly. The first one being that it lets you position anything relative to another thing incredibly easy. For example, with this, you can very easily, literally, in a matter of one single line of code, spawn or move an object directly to the front of another part, which is incredibly useful if you're creating spells, for example. You need to put the hitbox or a firewall just in front of you before it starts moving. And the second being that it lets you very easily orient a part relative to another part. Let me explain real quick. If you have a part and you want another part to have the same orientation as that part, then you just equal the C frame to the C frame of the part you want and boom just like that now they have the same direction of course you have to return the position of the part to its original position if you want it to retain its position Did I just say position three times but that's incredibly easy to do I'm assuming you know at least that much right this is incredibly easy for creating stuff like armors if you want the armors to be spawned in the right direction of torso arms legs head etc if you know math then you'd know how depressing it would be if you had to do all the math to position another object in front of another object like c-frame does thank god c-frame exists i'm one that is lacking brain cells as it is i wouldn't like to lose my remaining brain cells doing math while i code thank god i think you get the point next i think this one goes without saying but the amount of games that do not use animations or roblox nowadays is comparable to the amount of my remaining brain cells almost zero so if you still don't know how to play animations it's very easy just go and learn it real quick it's just like three or four lines of codes at most I mean, it's pretty much the same as animations, really. You just need to know how to do this, and there's really no excuse not to know how to do this. It's one of the easiest things to learn. I right, listen, man, if you don't know what world constraints are, basically, they are something that establish a link between parts that pretty much makes a part C-frame change while another part c-frame changes for example let's say you made a jacket for your game it doesn't matter how many times you position the jacket at the player's torso or arms if it's not welded to the torso or arms it's never going to stay on top incredibly useful for armor creation and also for weapon management and tool management this is literally the same as animations too. I listen, I'm not lazy. I I know I could have just coupled them together, but give me a pass. I literally tried coming up with a different reason, but really it's just the same. Well I mean, I guess VFX is so You know what I'm saying? That's tough! But harder to learn since sometimes the particle emitter won't emit unless you put a weight just before it plays, which is weird. But it is what it is. See for in the look vector is something that makes another part look at another part. In other words, makes the front of the part face in the direction of another part. If you want to know how to use this, I have a video on it. Go check it out. It will be in the description. 
Linear velocity is an instance that once stored inside an attachment that it's stored inside a part, allows you to move the part smoothly in a specified direction. Incredibly useful for moving things like firewalls or any hit bugs really. In the same video in the description, I also went through this, so check it out if you want to learn more about Twin service is something that gives us the tools to smoothly tween almost anything you'd ever want to tween in the smoothest of manners. You could twin positions, orientations, anything really. The best part is that you're not limited to parts. You can also twin UIs. Also, it comes with integrated effects you can easily use just by typing enum.easing style and the name of the effect you want. So I guess that's useful. Remote events let local scripts communicate with server scripts and vice versa. This is very commonly used in input managers, for example. If you press F, then throw a fireball. The input manager has to be a local script. So if you want the changes to be global, meaning for all players to see, you need to use a remote event that connects that piece of code with a server script. By devil events are used for client to client or server to server communication in terms of scripts, of course. It's pretty much the same idea, but instead of being client to server or vice versa, it's client to client or server to server. They are very similar to bindable and remote events. Just instead of just running code, you can store a function inside so you can actually instantly get information on return. The situations in which you'll need these will be a lot less than the bindable or remote events and they will be in very specific cases, but just know they exist. They can be very useful at times. This could be a very powerful tool if used correctly. It literally has the ability to store information like functions or tables that all other scripts have access to. This is a very important time saver. It takes a little bit of experience to know how to use to its fullest potential, but it's not even that hard to learn really. With this, you won't have to retype or copy paste the same lines of code throughout different scripts. Just store them inside the model script and give the scripts access to the model script. Great time saver. Eh, you will only need this in a handful of situations, but honestly, it's very useful in those you need it for. This might be a little harder to understand if you're new to scripting, but I'll do my best trying to explain it. Basically, what this does is that it changes what's in charge of the part. Usually, what's in charge of the part, all parts, usually it's the server, right? But what you might not know is that your client, which could be considered like your own server or your PC, can also be directly in charge of a part, making a lot of the changes that that part go through in your screen be what actually happens to the part. Basically, the part is now under control of your client, meaning that the server and other clients will not have to replicate what's happening to that part inside your client. Did that make sense? I know this probably didn't make sense, but if you want a more detailed explanation, just search it on Google or the Roblox Creator Hub or something. I don't know. I didn't know this for the longest time, but for almost anything you're trying to make, if you word it right in the Google search bar, you will find that others have run into the same issues you have. And the best part is, they solved it. So you can easily get the answers to any bugs you might have for free. I remember when I used to fix every single bug by myself, bro. Hell no, not doing that again. Me solving everything myself, if you're one of those people that says, no, because if I solve it myself, I'll be able to better learn from my mistakes. I'll just respond with, only a fool learns from his own mistakes. The wise man learns from the mistakes of others. Otto von Bismarck. What a great and wise man he was. Yeah, I don't know anything about this man. I just saw his quote. Also, it saves a lot of time. So you already know I ain't gonna spend three hours needlessly trying to find a bug or an error in my logic that someone else has already found the answer or the solution to and I have access to that information for free. F*** you if you think like that. Daddy, chill. Oopsies. Swear word. Damn, I'm really gonna cringe and I edit and hear myself saying that. Well. This pretty much covers it. I can't really think of any other things I use for my projects. Personally, this is all I use, man. I mean, on top of the basics of coding, of course. Oh, this was a long video. Well, thanks for listening, man. Stay safe, and we'll see you when I see you. Peace.